Hi, Amanda. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. The light is getting dark in my room here. I'm going to have to. Oh, but it's so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to pop over and help Ashley get connected. We're sitting in different offices, but. OK, cool. And I'm going to pull your slides up. Oh, Ashley's on. You don't even need me. <laughs> You're muted. Okay. I'm going to close the door. Start video. OK. I can still smell all that smoke, Ashley. It does not smell good. Uh-oh, what's going on? I think there is a fire or something near our clinic building over here in Sunnyvale, so. No. It doesn't smell too good. <laughs> you guys can't get a break, can you? Not really. <laughs> It's unfortunate that we just, I, well, I'm glad there were a ton of fire trucks that just went by. So hopefully we won't have any fire truck noise. Sure. Do I have your slides? Or maybe I don't have your slides. Did you guys send me your slides? I yeah. did. Okay. Um, did you find, let me know. If not, I can. The problem is they won't, allow you to share your screen and I had to actually contact them to make it possible for me. Um, did When did you send them? On October 30th, Ashley sent them. I can forward them too. I'm looking at them right now. Uh, okay, let me check real quick if I could just, I was gone for the weekend so they might have come up when I was away. Let's see here. Amanda, did you send them? Ashley did. did. Ashley did. Okay, so yeah. let, me, let me search Ashley. Hmm. I bet you they're here. I had like, you know, 600 email when I got back and I... Of course. <laughs> Imagine that. No, I was gone for a week in October and I came back and I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. Where do you start? I'm like, let me let me. Do I start at the top or do I start at the bottom? Like the oldest, the newest. Where do you go? <laughs> yeah, I am not seeing them. If you wouldn't mind resending them to Keto Kenya, that's probably going to be quicker than me searching. Yes. Okay, and I'm going to go. grab my beverage. So Amanda, you got that? Uh, yes. Computer is very slow. Beth, what state are you in? I'm in Wisconsin. Uh -huh. And you are the, are you the one we always um, send messages to in the keto calculator? In the helpline? In the helpline? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> well, it is nice to put a face to your name. So nice to you. Wonderful to meet you too. How, I'm curious, the one o'clock introduction from of the people from UCLA, did that go long? Was that a long discussion? No, and the reason is, um, unfortunately, people are having a really hard time logging into this. Oh. And their server apparently was down. Oh, uh, no. And I, I didn't know what was going on. I, I emailed them and I said, there's nobody here. Yeah, Andy, cool. like, and I went ahead and I did my presentation because I had, you know, several and felt kind of silly, but I went through it and no one, and then somebody showed up and she said, I had a really hard time getting in, you know, and the link isn't working, yada, yada. So apparently <laughs> there, I don't know, maybe they got so many people all at one time, it just overloaded. I don't know, but there's only been a few people. I forwarded, I forwarded the email. Okay, thank you. I can always send it again, just let me know. Okay, I'm gonna keep refreshing here. So yeah, it's just really unfortunate, but the record is being recorded even now as we're preparing, it's being recorded. And I believe their plan is just to edit, you know, the 
the meat of the sessions rather than the chatter prior to, because every, <laughs> every session we've done this, we've chatted and I've explained this. So I feel like, ah, uh, I hope I didn't say anything out of line here, but I'm sure it's, I'm sure they're trying to deal with um, this. And we are kind of, the keto channel was kind of running on its own. And then they have the main channel, which I believe Brad is moderating himself. So I'm not sure how much of this is them not really like kind of letting just things happen for me and or what, but I do know people were trying to inform them that they couldn't access the site. So I, at, literally there were five people all day. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, and in past years, have you guys been to the Epilepsy Expo? Apparently it's very well attended and it's only, they've only had it going for several you know years. Um, this is the first time the Charlie Foundation has got involved. So that's why I don't know much about it. But um, it's been a very successful event and they get you know, a lot of speakers and a lot of families coming out and the dietitians think it's all great. So it's just unfortunate, but you know, it's, it's a learning experience. So I'm sure they figured out all kinds of things that they didn't know about hosting it this way. Right. As everyone is, you know, going virtual. Okay, here it comes. I can see my message. Did you see your message come up that it came in? Can you, I, am I screen sharing or no? No. Okay. Probably a good thing because I just would be showing you all my email. <laughs> here we go. Let me save this first. All of the, please transfer my calculator to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I can do that for you anytime. I know. I've asked you to do it, I think, many times. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I know your name so well. <laughs> uh, let's see. Conferences, 2020. 2020. It's also, my, it's a very unique name. So I feel like it would be hard to forget, even if there was only like one email. You know, I know a lot of Ashleys. Can you believe that? Amanda, yeah. But your last name, after Mauer, is, is unique. Oh, yeah. definitely. And after all that, I had it. Because it said, do you want me to replace the one I have in here? All right. Let's see. Amanda, your last name is hard to remember at first. But once you got it, you, you never forget it. So it <laughs> that's, a, that's a lovely name. Just look, at, look for the name that never ends. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I also have a very ethnic last name. And then I insisted on keeping my name, which is the ethnic name, Zupac. Huh. Um, and people butcher that, but it's fine. That's the fun part, to learn about <laughs> how other people say it. Yeah. I love meeting new people and they try it. And I'm just like, good job. <laughs> yeah. So... The funny thing is when I was very humbled by <laughs> correcting people all these years on how to pronounce my name, then I go to the country where the name originated, which is a little town next to Austria called Slovenia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was part of the Soviet Union at one time, part of Yugoslavia, which was part of the Soviet Union. And they introduced me, this is a conference. They, they heard me say my name and they said, no, <laughs> it's really? Zupitz. Zupitz. Why do you say Zupac? <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this is the way it's supposed to be pronounced. I've been saying it wrong all these years. So then I stopped correcting people. Okay, here's your beautiful building. All right. And it is one minute before the hour, and we have no attendees, but we're going to go ahead because, um, oh, let me screen share. Um, you know, it's just, we won't have the Q and A. We just won't have the Q and A. Yeah. It'll be a short session. So we'll just, we'll just go with the length of it. I probably should turn some lights on. Um, sun is setting here and it's getting darker. Whoa, hang on. Now you cannot see the outdoors anymore, but, oh, that's where is it? Ooh. Dim that a little bit. Amanda, you have perfect lighting. Oh, I, I, 
trying to pull the computer forward from out under the cabinets to make it look better. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Because for a while it was like dark from here down and I was like, that looks funky. That's a little bit better. It's not, it's, I don't have that big glare up above me. All right. So, um, I'm going to have you introduce yourselves and then I am screen sharing. I just need to bring up the slides. Your slides are here, as I mentioned. I was just not seeing them for some reason. Um, okay. Do you see that? Do you see yep. your slide? Okay, yep. excellent. Um, and yeah, so I let everybody introduce themselves because it's just fun to hear it from your voice and then um, and then I kind of, I'm just kind of do some lead-ins, basically asking you what's on the slide or reinstating what's on the slide. Um, and we just wing it, you know, it's just informal. It's not meant to be a stiff presentation by any means. And uh, so it is 5.01, nobody's here. <laughs> um, and this Zoom, they don't have an admit. I don't have to admit anyone. They just pop in all of a sudden. So okay. when I see somebody, I'll say welcome. Um, at whenever we have a break in the conversation, I'll just welcome them and ask them if they have any questions. Otherwise, we're just going to go through it. And it's going to be like a little commercial. And so if they ask questions, are, they, are their voices heard audibly? Or are they having to send a message in the chat box? No, they they need to unmute. So what I usually say is welcome whoever I see the name of, and you know if you have a question, please unmute, and um, and then most of them do and just introduce themselves. Yeah, I I've had one person use the chat. All they said was thank you. Um, so okay. it seems like that's not being used, but I didn't encourage them to use it anyways. Yeah. So, yeah. If I can get a little bit of light. Okay, so um, what is, it? let's see, let me let me start Lucil Packard Children's Hospital Center. Okay, so I'm gonna start right now. Hello everyone. Today we have the dietitian and nurse from Lucil Packard Children's Hospital um, at Stanford. And I am going to let them introduce themselves and we're gonna talk about their ketogenic diet therapy program. So ladies, take it away. Maybe, maybe Ashley, you wanna start. Okay, hi everybody. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us today via Zoom. I'm sorry we can't meet in person at Disneyland, um, but my name is Ashley Kinney and I'm a nurse practitioner here with the epilepsy group at Lucille Packard child, in the child neurology department with Stanford, and I work in tandem um, with all things ketogenic diet with our dietitian, and that is Amanda. <laughs> and my name is Amanda Oftermauer. I am a ketogenic diet RD at the Children's Hospital with Stanford. Um, there is another dietitian that I, I share my role with. Her name is Paige. Um, but I am the primary person that sees kids in clinic and also inpatient in Wonderful. And I love that a nurse practitioner is involved. And I love that you have two dietitians, one being primary, one being backup, because the dietitian has to take a break at some point, go on vacation, and there needs to be a backup. So those are things that we look at as quality um, inclusions in ketogenic diet therapy programs. So kudos to you guys. So we're going to take it a step further and share their email addresses. So if you're, if you don't have a pen handy and you know how to do a screenshot, you can take a screenshot on my Apple. It's just control uh, or shift command and the number four. Um, and it, I'm not sure what it is on other computers, but I use that multiple times a day to take pictures <laughs> of things that I don't want to write down. Um, it seems we're writing less and less and just typing everything or speaking everything. So these, uh, these are the um, email addresses for you to get a hold of, of these wonderful professionals. Um, and I think we're going to talk in the next slide 
about, oh no, I'm gonna talk about it here. So the first question that a lot of people have is, I live in your area and I've got a child who has been followed by maybe a pediatrician and mm -hmm. we've tried a medication or two, we're really thinking we need, you know, we need some more specialized support and are, have learned about the ketogenic diet, but don't really know much about a program like yours. What do we do? Where do we go? So what has to happen first is the pediatrician or the provider does need to send a referral to the child neurology department. And they need, your child will need to meet with one of our child neurologists or epileptologists. They in turn would then need to make a referral to the ketogenic diet clinic. So once you've met with one and established with one of our neurologists, you would then be able to meet with Amanda and with me. And um, we have hour long appointments and we always work in tandem. And again, if it's not Amanda, it would be me and Paige. And uh, the first visit is typically just describing the diet options that we have and what they entail and what the diet would look like and what we would recommend for your child. And um, we would have continued follow-up visits based on whether you choose to, con you know, to start the diet. Wonderful. So moving on to the types of ketogenic therapies that you provide, um, you're only, you only see pediatric patients. I, I see that. Can you um, just explain your choice or how do you choose between which of these classic or modified Atkins diet you, you use? So we do only see pediatric patients since we are at the children's hospital. Um, in terms of selecting between the two diets, um, a lot of it is dependent upon kind of our initial assessment with our families. And also we take a lot of um, input from the, the referring neurologist to see if they've already kind of feel strongly towards a classic or a modified Atkins diet. Um, and then Ashley and I gather a lot of information in that initial visit to help draw, steer families in a good direction in a diet that would best fit the family and the mm -hmm. child. Great. Mm -hmm. So another quality indicator that the Charlie Foundation looks for, it's a family-centered decision. It sounds like you are educating the family and then um, uh, telling them what the options are and then letting them decide, but also guiding them because you really you probably have it figured out. As a ketogenic dietitian, I can usually pick it in my head before I teach them anything, but you want them to understand and, and be part of that decision. Right. And our goal is, of course, to choose a diet that's sustainable for a family. So if there's certain foods a child absolutely cannot give up or, you know, they have, you know, they're constantly potentially stealing food or they're, um, you know, they just don't have an established routine. There's certain things that we look for that would make one diet, a, you know, a stronger recommendation from us over another. And, and of course, we want people to have success on the diet. And we would love for them to be able to trial the diet for a full three months. So we also look at what would be the most likely to be a successful diet uh, for your child. Wonderful. Yeah. And then during these days of, you know, restricted hospital admissions with COVID, mm -hmm. how are you initiating these therapies? So we are continuing to admit inpatient for the classic ketogenic diet. Um, we do a lot of discussion with our families to make sure that they are comfortable with coming in for that admission and modified Atkins diet. Um, we've continued to initiate outpatient. Okay, great. Um, and so just so I understand, because I think rules differ by state here in Wisconsin, um, our pediatric hospital uh, will start somebody up as late as age 19 because we're allowed to treat up to 21, but we consider the diet up to a three-year process. So we stop initiating diets at age 19 and refer them to the adults nearby and they do keto or 19 to start there. Is there something like that in, in, in California? 
That's a really good question. I think we definitely will not take a new patient that's 18 or above, but if a patient has been established for years with a provider, then we could talk about initiating the diet if they're 18 or 19. I, I would actually need to verify that with the hospital, but I do know that our uh, child neurologists will see patients until up to 21 okay. if they are already established. Okay. Patient. That's, yeah, that's sort of similar to our experience. And you're right, if it's new, if it's a new adult age 19, they need to get into the epilepsy adult program because they need to establish relationships with those specialists and not go undergo the turmoil of getting established in a, at a pediatric center and then have to, within a year or two years, go over to adult, which that can be traumatic for people. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. That's great. All right. Uh, this is a list of your neurologists. Wow. You have a lot. <laughs> That's a big staff. Yeah. And they all are very familiar with ketogenic diet. All of them have worked with the ketogenic diet, managed it, and you know, of course here, but also at their institutions prior to coming to Stanford. So we are comfortable working with all of them and they are part of the team. They're part of the decision-making team when we are looking into whether or not the diet is a good fit for your family and your child. And they're all wonderful. I, you know, I really <laughs> send a shout out to all of them. They're wonderful child neurologists. Did I see Dr. Westoff is um, a speaker for another topic in the Epilepsy Expo, either today or tomorrow, do you know? Yes, yeah, she is speaking. She um, is an expert in neonatal epilepsy and seizures. Okay. And Dr. Galantine, Bill Galantine is gonna be speaking. I think he spoke already today with Dr. Grant about epilepsy surgeries of okay. Canada and what they're looking for. Um, and Dr. Porter actually is our specialist for children that have tuberous sclerosis. And we do know that tuberous sclerosis does typically respond well to the ketogenic diet. So we have many patients we work uh, with her, you know, with doing the ketogenic diet. Wonderful. Do you have anybody that specializes in other um, rare uh, syndromes like Drave, Lennox-Gastaut, um, the mitochondria? Um, uh, like complex one deficiency? You know, I don't, I know various, quite a few of these child neurologists have areas of research they're doing. Um, I know Dr. Bomber does research on sunflower syndrome and uh, some of the others on genetic disorders. Um, Dr. Knowles does research on um, basically with, with rats right now and, and on myelin and the effects of myelin on seizure activity. So she's starting some research there, but, um, but no, I'd say Dr. Porter and tuberous sclerosis stand out the, the biggest and Dr. Wustoff with neonatal epilepsy. Okay, great. They're the two most specialized in my understanding. So your insurance coverage, um, you're providing a phone number for people to find out um, if they are covered. And right, but again, they would need to be referred by their primary care provider to child neurology first. Okay. And, and yes, that, that would be the department to find out if you have the insurance to be authorized for a visit. Wonderful. All right, I think that is it. So we had one person who hopped on and then hopped off. Um, so obviously that person was either lost or didn't want to learn about anything. <laughs> so, whoops, um, let me get my screen back here. Okay, I'm trying to make this, oh, I know why. It's because I'm, I have to stop screen sharing, then I can blow everybody up and make it big. Okay, well, there's your commercial, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley went somewhere. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, they will condense this down a little bit and put it up there, but it's it's a great resource for, for Southern uh, California. Um, I mentioned to the UCLA earlier that 
I really love going out to Los Angeles, which I do at least once a year, sometimes twice a year to do things for the Charlie Foundation. I've spoken at the Epilepsy Foundation conferences many times and a uh, um, couple other, my daughter was there living in LA for many years. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've been out there many times, but, and met with the dietitians. And one of the things that I realize is that there's, there's pretty good communication between not only dietitians, but it seems like nurses and doctors from different organizations. I mean, even what I would consider competing organizations, there's good information sharing and that doesn't happen in the rest of the country. So you guys have something unique there and it's a synergy that I think has spurned um, more um, patients knowledge about the therapy and then also getting them to centers that they can get help. So kudos to you guys for, for um, you know, being a community because you truly are. Hi. I'm so sorry. My computer just shut down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely up here too. I, I, I talk a lot with um, Marianne at UCSF and Marianne at uh, Children's Hospital Oakland. So, and recently have had a couple kids from Southern California. So have been able to talk with CHLA and a couple other places down there. So it's typically pretty easy to get a hold of people, especially when I'm like, someone's transferring and I, I need to find the program that they can go to or, or things like that. So yeah, nice to be able to talk with other people because even though we are providing like guidance for the same diet, there's always a little something that's different. And maybe it works better for someone else than, you know, than what we're doing. So it's always nice to kind of hear like, oh, what could we tweak mm -hmm. to continue to try to provide, you know, the best care for our patients and our families. Yeah. I, and I love taking information back to not only the Charlie Foundation, but there is a larger organization now that has not gone public yet that um, is called uh, International Society, International Ketogenic, I N International Ketogenic Society, INCS. I'm thinking of the acronym, International Ketogenic Society led by Dr. Zhang Ro, who you may know is um, down in, he moved down to Rady's in San Diego. He had been in Calgary for many years, um, originally from, trained at UCLA and has moved around a bit, but he's kind of a Charlie Foundation's medical advisor. And he's starting up this society of ketogenic professionals um, with a research branch and an outreach branch. And so the Charlie Foundation is getting very closely involved with that. Um, but one of, so we're speaking up for, especially me, I'm speaking up for nurses and dietitians about what we think we need, yeah. And um, resources and, and even standards um, to help with this differences that we see. And some of the differences are, I think mostly or largely just how a facility operates, um, you know, like when can you see patients and can you see the patient with a nurse and that type of thing. And some of it is personality, right? You bring your personality to your practice and, it, and that carries over often, but we're going to, you know, er, this is early conversation, but I think it's okay for me to talk about it because we wanna talk about it. We wanna to talk to you and, you know, you folks and to patients about it. Um, we feel like we're moving towards a certification process so that every center has a certain level of um, competency maybe where they meet standards. And so then we would share what those standards are. And it would be just like the consensus paper is, you guys probably are familiar with the consensus yeah, paper. Definitely. It was a whole bunch of us because we all were like, this is how I do it. This is how you do it. You know, <laughs> should we agree or should we just report both ways? And so we came up with a consensus. We actually voted on things. Mm -hmm. And you know, to expand on that, to be um, a little bit more refined in terms of practice, you know, what labs are really necessary and how often do we do them and what do we do about them when they're not normal? So those right. kinds of things. And what degree of ketosis is ideal? Because mm -hmm. we don't really know that, you know, we just say, 
Well, it's where you get the best seizure control with idiosyncrasies that you have to learn. It seems to take a long time for everyone to get comfortable with that. And then to yeah. teach that as you're, as you're getting comfortable, you're also teaching your families and they're like, don't seem very confident about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm thinking back on my early years of like, oh man, I have to go in the room and tell them things I really don't feel good about. Um, and we're gonna, we're just gonna wing this, uh -huh. which, you know, which you end up doing a lot when you're, you're working with a patient that is completely different from the last hundred patients that you worked with. Right. Um, but these, you know, the whole, the whole purpose of this is to help um, come up with helpful definitions and standards. And then, um, then we can promote centers that have these. Right. And what I see, so I'm wearing my dietitian training hat now, what I see a lot when I train centers is that sometimes I'm training the same center over and over again, because it's a whole different crew. And whoever was there took every all the knowledge with them and didn't train the people that mm -hmm. were hired. So, um, so we're trying to fix that as well. You know, trying to get some buy-in. You know, maybe it's salary. Maybe they just need to be paid more because this is a super special area. We, we haven't figured out what it is, but we, you know, we know there is pretty high turnover in in mm. position particularly for, I don't think for nurses as much as for dietitians. I think it's more a problem in the dietitian area. Uh, but um, yeah, I and mean, nobody wants to come to Wisconsin. I don't know why. <laughs> <It's so> nice here. <laughs> Everybody wants to go to California. Beth, you bring up a good point. We give the consensus guidelines to all of our families and just as reading material, because I value that information. And I actually at the last Keto University, I um, was lucky enough to have time to talk to Dr. Eric Kosoff and asked him, what are you going to bring out the next one? And he said, well, it just takes so much time. And I mean, I understand it does take a lot of time, but that information is so valuable to us as providers and dietitians. And, um, so do you know we had a 2018 update? Yes, and that's the one we hand out, yes. Okay. And now there's an adult, which you guys don't care about, you're not adult. Um, and now there is a GLUT1 consensus Excellent. guide. Excellent, is, is that GLUT, is that white? That's the white paper and the, the calculator? No, one? No. no, 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 that's my paper though. This is an actual consensus guideline. I, okay. wasn't, I wasn't on it, but um, I reviewed it. I was a reviewer for it. So that's how I know. And I, I'm quite sure it's been published. Um, and you know what, I, I can send it to you. I'll look for it, but I'm quite sure it got published within a couple weeks ago. So I know okay. I, the review was due last month. So. But yeah, it's like they kind of spun off of what we did and we were just very happy for them because that's another really good foundation, a very motivated couple leading it and raising funds for research and um, yeah. doing yeah, something. I think it would be helpful because we even have like some, some older teenagers with GLUT1 who who then, who know what's going on and then you have to convince them and you're like, I know this sounds like it's gonna be hard, but we're gonna do it together. So mm -hmm. I feel like it would, even even if it's geared more towards adults, it would be really helpful. If, yeah. yeah, no, the glue one, I think is all ages. Oh, perfect. All all ages, yeah. So I'll, I'll look for that for you. And um, I probably should put it in the toolkit. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> I can, because it's open access, I won't get in trouble. Um, I'm just making so, myself a note here, tool kit. And I was going to say, I mean, you're, Beth, you're talking about, in a way, standardizing the education of the providers and dietitians. So no matter where a patient moves in the country, they would get similar information. And I will, you know, do a shout out to Nutricia, who sponsors the Keto University. And that's where I've been twice, I know Nancy has been once or twice, and once, and it's, fantastic education for dietitians, for nurses, nurse practitioners, doctors, just to really get a sense of what people are doing all around the country. And we absolutely try to model what is being done elsewhere and, um, you know, follow the articles written by Eric Kosoff and other, you know, people in the field just to make sure that we're 
providing accurate information for our families. Awesome, that's great, that's great to know. Um, so you know there's an every other year global symposium and Nutrisha is a sponsor of that as, as are the other companies too. I mean, there aren't that many that really cater specifically a group of products for keto. It's basically Cambrook and Nutrisha and mm -hmm. Vitaflow and Solace um, who are, you know, there's, they sponsor every year these meetings and the meet, these global meetings are every other year. So there was supposed to be one in Brighton, yeah. England last month, of course, that's been postponed. So it's going to be next October. Um, and that's a big meeting. Eric um, and I are always on the planning committee and um, it's, you know, it's a well done meeting. And now we've expanded beyond epilepsy into other conditions, brain, brain cancer is one. Right. Um, but as you know, as the research comes out and elevates it to more evidence-based randomized contro controlled trials, or at least randomized trials, um, we bring that into the conference. So, and Beth, I'm, I'm curious, aside from epilepsy, what are you finding research-wise that's responding well to the keto diet? Yeah. So the, probably the next biggest uh, area of application is um, cancer and in particular brain, glioblastoma brain tumor, um, but other tumors, cancers. Um, I actually have people with epilepsy are in my, in my private practice are the smallest group. I have such mm -hmm. a huge variety of, of different, mostly brain disorders. So um, migraine headache is a big one. Um, eating disorders, that's a new one. And we published our first right? case. Yeah, we published our first case and we're actually um, in the IRB process of getting a little study going, a pilot study going. Um, Parkinson's, early onset Alzheimer's, I've had several only tube fed cases, but going from, and you'll appreciate this because um, you know, tube feedings, um, you know, I've had lots of adults or I shouldn't say lots, like half a dozen adults that are so um, impaired that they can't safely swallow. So they get a feeding tube and the family wants to do, you know, like whole food nutrition, mm -hmm. tube feedings. And I'm like, that's great. You know, we may as well do it low carb while we're doing this to make it even better. But they're getting like two or 300 grams of carbohydrate a day which is almost double what wow. the RDA is. So that's why I, I'm, I like, one thing we could do is cut the carb way down and it's corn syrup too, usually, mm -hmm. you know? So we, we start, I start bringing the carb down to at least what the RDA is or at least a hundred instead of two or 300 and then knock it down a little bit from there. But everybody that I've done that for has just been brighter, you know, I've got a guy that was in diapers and he was able to use the bathroom on his own. He doesn't need diapers anymore. And a woman that was like a couch potato all the time, up walking with her walker and then walking without the walker. So people are like, this just tells me like, sugar is not good for the aging brain. <laughs> Every day in large amounts is not good for the aging brain. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. And I've, you know, I've, presented um there, so there's a metabolic health summit which is a meeting used to be in florida so it was in long beach last year right um you guys may have heard about that so i presented an abstract on this 80 something year old woman that i had been following for quite a while with and she had alzheimer's and but a feeding tube which is you know easy access to whatever you come up with and complete compliance so um, uh, yeah, a couple of the nursing homes were like, oh my gosh, <laughs> there, I mean, nurses from nursing homes are there just going, you know, this is so crazy to think that we're, what we're feeding them is not helping their condition. It's, it's actually making it worse. So anyways, those are some of the applications that I work with, but um, autism, I have some kids, just autism, no seizures. Um, uh, 
that's about it. Uh, have you ever seen my pocket guide? Yeah. Yes. And yeah, I'm the, one of the early pages. I'm, I'm putting together um, an appendix because I know it's, there's a lot in there and it needs to be um, easier to find things. But there is a chart that shows level one evidence, randomized controlled trials, and those that's just epilepsy, peds, and adults. And then the second uh, row is um, actually diabetes has been added to that, and mm -hmm. um, glioblastoma, brain tumor. And then the third row is everything else, which is most things, case studies, prospective studies, um, you know, weaker evidence. But the fact that you know they're in the early phases of being researched is is interesting and also you know the fact that for some people there's no other option and they, if they want to do it they'll do it we are big proponents of your supporters of the pocket guide i <laughs> we love it we're going to be ordering more very soon for our institution so um just thank you to everybody that put that together oh i i will pass that on i'm glad oh. you're appreciating it oh it's wonderful all right all right well thank you so much ladies for taking time out of your busy day at work to tell us about your facility and um it was very informative and uh yes, I, and I know they're going to be showing this on some platform where people can have access to it Wonderful. And please, you know, if anybody wants more information or just have questions, feel free to reach out to us via email as well. And, All right. Thank you so yeah. much. Nice to meet you, Beth. Have nice a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.